Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. This is Nadia Hernandez, executive producer at ELS. Welcome to today's ELSX, and thank you for joining us. ELS is a community that brings together executive assistants supporting the world's most influential leaders. We cultivate professional development by providing an experience for assistants to connect, collaborate, and contribute solutions to their greatest challenges. We are also the creator of the ELS Forum, a professional development experience for executive assistants held in 26 cities worldwide. At the forum, attendees gain support, training, and inspiration from world-renowned instructors and peers to discover a renewed sense of purpose and passion in their career. If you're interested in attending a forum, you can find more information at elsforum.com. Today, I'm thrilled to partner with one of the world's top technology trainers, Vicki Sokol Evans. Author of the popular Microsoft Office 100 Tips series for PC and Mac, Vicki is a Microsoft certified trainer with over 20 years of classroom training experience, specializing in Microsoft, Google, and Apple productivity platforms. She travels the globe as a sought after international speaker, delivering live Jerry Maguire inspired keynote presentations to a variety of audiences and teaching engaging instructor led workshops and courses. Hello and welcome, Vicki. Thank you, Nadia. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for having me. Today, Vicki will share with us the Excel feature every assistant and your team should master. There will be an opportunity to get your questions answered. Please submit your questions at any time via the questions tab on your webinar toolbar on the right hand side of your screen. You can download a copy of the handout for today's webinar via the handout tab on go to webinar toolbar on the right hand side of your screen. A recording of this webinar and a certificate of attendance will be emailed to you tomorrow. It is now my pleasure to hand it on over to Vicki. Thank you, Nadia, I appreciate it. I'm so excited, guys, to be here. Happy Administrative Professionals Week, everybody. I'm excited that I get to have this particular uh, slot, time slot. Um, let me move some messages off my window here. So I see a bunch of you saying hello to me. I've got the questions panel up here. So hello to, uh, to those of you sending your well wishes and where you're um, dialing from. So yeah, Nadia mentioned about this 100 tips worksheet. So I am going to, if you turn it, if you haven't printed it out, go ahead, quickly print it out right now. Or just have it on your screen, a different, a separate monitor. And um, I'm going to be focused on page two. And we're just going to be focused on tips 45 through 52. And, uh, and I'm just going to be focused on tables. And for those of you, I'm curious, how many of you have seen me present Excel tables before? Raise your hand. You have a little cartoon um, hand. And you raise your hand if you've seen me present Excel tables before. Let me see how I can find the hands. Uh, dashboard. Okay. Uh, 10% looks like. All right. So while you guys are raising your hands, oh, it's growing, 12%. Let me explain. For those of you who have seen me present Excel tables, I have some advanced tables, uh, table tips for you. And then um, for those of you who have never seen me present Excel tables, we're going to start from the very beginning. So it'll be a review for some of, the, some of you that have already seen it before. Um, I am, as Nadia mentioned, I've been training Microsoft uh, technologies for over 20 years, both for PC and Mac. Um, I'm going to lower your hands real quick. and I want to know how many, hold on one second, let me lower your hands. Uh, I can't remember how I do that. Attendees. Hey Nadia, can you uh, lower everyone's hand? Do you see that? An option, oh here, okay, hold on. I can do it. Okay, I got it. I got it, I got it. <laughs> I was on the wrong thing. All right, um, how many of you, I've lowered all your hands, how many of you are Mac? You focus on just Mac at work? Raise your hand if you focus just on Mac. There's probably just a few of you. Um, 
while you're raising your hands, this is both for PC and Mac because Microsoft's doing a really good job of getting them to look the same from this point forward. So there are minor little differences, but I'm going to share with you um, the different the differences in between the two. So the agenda is I'm going to focus on the basic table tips from the handout. Um, the handout is there. There's a handout portion of GoToWebinar. You'll be able to see the PDF handout and you can download that. Um, and I'll also give you access to the step-by-step -step instructions for all the tips in this little section. So I would just, don't worry about the handout if you haven't gotten it already, just take notes during the session. Plus you'll get the replay, okay? You'll all get the replay. And then, then we're gonna have extra tips for power users and then Q&A. So like Nadia said, post your questions in the Q&A panel during the session. She's gonna be flagging the questions to um, ask me towards the end of the session. I'm hoping to get through about 35 minutes. That way we have quite a bit of time for Q&A. I am presenting from a Windows machine because I, I suspected this only 1% of you are Mac users at work. So I am going to, I'm gonna go ahead and lower your hands. Um, so I'm presenting from a Windows platform. I'm using Office 365, which means I have the latest and greatest version of Excel. So for those of you on Office 365, your, your uh, platform is gonna match mine. But everything really what I'm doing has been around for a while. So I'm just so excited about sharing with you because you're not gonna believe um, how much time you're gonna save just by, by using this tip these tips. Um, again, I'm working from this spread, from this handout. If you don't have the handout, don't worry. The, it, these tips are coming from my 100 tips book. I'll talk about the book later. And for those of you that um, know many of the tips I'm demonstrating, um, the tables piece, I'm not allowed to tell you what's on the exam, the certification exams. I have over 20 certifications, but the Excel table does meet the objective of the Excel core exam. So if you are planning on pursuing certification at some point, you must master Excel tables. And, um, and I just think this is one of those features that every single person should know. Um, in order to work more effectively in Excel. All right, let's go ahead and begin. I'm gonna jump over to my Excel spreadsheet. And I will give you all access to this spreadsheet. Um, it looks like we are absolutely full. There are people that couldn't get into the webinar. So uh, the replay will be available for everybody, for those people that couldn't get in. And you'll have the replay. And then what'll happen is you'll have access to this Excel spreadsheet. So you can watch the replay, pause and play, and work in these examples along with me at a later time. You're not gonna do it right now. All right, just sit back and, and watch. So here I have on my screen, now the name of this session is Excel Tables for Assistance, but really everyone should be using Excel Tables. I just happen to be using a guest list as my example. And because we all could relate to a guest list, whether you're an assistant or not, you probably have all worked with a guest list, whether it's for your wedding, for a meeting, for a large event, for a workshop, training, whatever it is. So I am um, in this spreadsheet, and what I need to do is I need, I'm monitoring the RSVPs. I also need to um, have some calculations in here. So there is this feature right here called Format as a Table. And when you click on this button, so I'm just, I just click somewhere in this list. It doesn't matter where I'm clicking, just one cell. You want to avoid doing this. You want to make sure you don't select multiple cells. Just select one cell, format as a table, and pick the very first option here. You can pick any color you want, but my goal for you today is if you learn just one tip, just get it into a table format. And I'm going to go ahead and click this very first one here. And it outlines my range. And then it has this question here. It says, my table has headers. And every table has to have a header, so have to, has to have a header row. So you'll see the very top row of my list could be the header row. So I'm going to go ahead and say my table has header, so use that first row as the header row, and I'll go ahead and click OK. Now you'll notice some benefits right off the bat. So the first thing you'll probably notice is that it has these uh, drop downs, so I can sort and filter anywhere in my list. You also see the alternating shaded rows. These are called banded rows. So you no longer have to do manual shading every other row, which you know takes hours of time. And the third benefit of doing, uh, adding this as a table, formatting this as a table, I should say, is watch this. I want you to look at the A, B, C, D, E, F, G column. And I'm gonna scroll down 
and watch what happens to the full name, email, address, city, state, and zip. It all now pops up into the column headers. Um, I'm, guys, I'm going to turn off my webcam in case the, the webcam is causing a delay. Yes, so I apologize. I'll I'm later. getting a few comments that there is a little bit of a delay. Okay, cool. So let's see if the webcam, if I can get rid of that, and that'll help. And let me know, Nadia, if that doesn't help. And I'm going to pop out the audience view so I can see as well. Okay. Thank you, Nadia. Um, okay, so let me go back to this. I want you to look at so three benefits. Number one, I get the uh, auto filters and sort on my columns. The third, the second benefit is I get the band in rows, automatic shading. And then the third benefit is you look at the A, B, C, D, E, F, G columns. Watch when I scroll down and work inside this list. You'll then see that the A, B, C, D, E, F, G columns disappear and the, the header row pops into place. I see that there's still a delay. Let me wait till it gets caught up. Like right now, it's it to me it shows Nadia. To me, it shows still the A B C D E F G column. Is that right? Yes, that's what I'm seeing as well. However, now it just I'm, popped into full name, right? Yes, I'm just getting still a few comments from the attendees that the um they're still getting a delay on their end. Okay, hold on. Oh, it says the webcam is still on. Hold on. Okay, there we go. Okay. Okay, hold on. Let me see. There's still a delay because I just moved my. Okay. And then um, you also because, see, yeah, because of the delay, Vicky. Um, I'm getting a few comments. If you could possibly just go back onto how you got to this process. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Well, hello everybody. Welcome to the webinar. <laughs> oh, don't you love technology? Okay. Um. We obviously know it's a guest list. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it into a table format. A table is an object and in Excel. So I just have to click one cell, any cell within my list, and I'm watching. Okay, perfect. I, I can see what you guys see. So I'm watching that as I do this. I'm going to go up to the Home tab on my ribbon, and I'm going to click on Format as a Table, and then click the very first button first option. Don't worry about the colors at this point. Just click the very first button and then it outlines my range. Perfect. And right here it, it says my table has headers. So you have to decide, you have to tell Excel whether or not you want Excel to use your first row as the header row in your table. My first row in my, my list is the header row, so I'm going to go ahead and check my table has headers and then click OK so that it uses my top row as the header row. Perfect. So now, I, if you look at the, three, the top three benefits, it, number one, you have the automatic filters and sort buttons across the top, across the headers. And when I click on full name, you can see the drop down. And then the second feature that you can probably see is the banded rows. And I've got the filters, the banded rows, so it's automatic shading. And then the third benefit is if you look at A, B, C, D, E, F, G column, deja vu. <laughs> um, when I scroll down and work inside the table, the table headers now become the column headers. So this is beautiful. When you're working in your list, Excel now knows that it freezes that first row, that first header row, and allows you to use those as the column headers. So that is tip number 45 on the handout. Tip 45 is format your list as a table, and that is uh, for both PC and Mac. And let me show you the difference between the two ribbons. So for those of you on Mac, I just want to make sure you're covered. And this, everything I'm doing is for Excel 2007 and above. Tables were introduced in 2007 in, in PC. So if you have 2007 and above, you're able to do this. Um, on the Home tab for PC, 
um, you can note you can see side by side and you guys will all get this Excel spreadsheet. You can see the comparison between the PC home tab and the Mac home tab. And same thing with the tables tab that we're going to see in just a little bit and the Mac version as well. So notice at the very bottom of my screen, the tab in the Excel spreadsheet says PC and Mac ribbons. So if you are curious how to do this on Mac, you could just go to this tab in the Excel spreadsheet that I'm going to send you. Okay, so let me go back to this one. The next tip, tip number 46, is I'm going to go down to the bottom of the table and add more people to this table. So when I go to the bottom, I'm going to add more people. It's catching up. I see that it's trying to catch up. So I'm just putting just, you know, fictitious people of strange names. As I type, all I'm doing is I'm typing and I'm hitting enter, typing and hitting enter. And then it just automatically expands the table as I type. When you add columns to this, to your tables, what will happen is that it will also add your columns to the table definition as well. So I'm going to add the budget column. And I'm going to hit enter after I type the word budget. And you'll see that it automatically expands the table as you type, which is amazing. You don't have to do any extra work. It eliminates unessential work. So that is tip number 46. Just expand the table as you type. Tip number 47 is create a calculated column. So I want to show you what, it, what happens when you create a calculation in a table. Uh, you'll notice that I have, let me go ahead and center the RSVP numbers. You'll notice I have, I'm tracking the RSVPs as they come in. I just put in the, num the head count for each person. And then what I'd like to do is create a calculation in the budget column. And let's say our budget, we're going to have an extravagant event. Suppose this is for the admin awards and we are um, inviting all these people. So it's going to be $1,000 per person as our budget because that's what we deserve, right? I'm going to type equal 1,000 times, and I'm going to point to the RSVP field in that row. And then I'm going to hit enter. I'm watching the screen just so that it gets caught up. And check that out. So all I did was I hit enter, and it automatically copied that formula that function, a formula, all the way up the column and all the way down the column, which is amazing. I would do it again. Normally, I would do it again because I just love seeing that. But because of the de delay, I'm not going to be able to um, to do that. So you create once you create a calculation, it automatically updates all throughout the all throughout the column. So that is tip number 47. Again, if you don't have the worksheet, just write tip 47 calculated column. You're, go, you're all going to get the step-by-step -step instructions that I'm, that I'm doing for these, this, these specific tips. 48 is instantly add a total row to your table. So I'm going to go to, uh, if you click, once you're in a table, when you go to the very top of your ribbons, you'll notice this table tools design tab at the top. It's a contextual tab. Because I'm clicking inside of a table, it gives me this extra ribbon. So I'm going to click on design tab. And then I'm able to see all the different tools involved that the four tables. And I want this particular tool right here, total row. And we're going to add a total row to the bottom of this list. And you'll notice that it automatically gave me a sum at the very bottom of the list for the budget column. And think about what other columns, what other columns would we want to create calculations for? And you're probably thinking RSVP column. So let's go ahead and look at the RSVP column. And when you click in the drop down for each one of these columns, you're going to get a, when you click in the cell in each one of these columns, you're going to get a drop down that gives you all of your functions. Well, the most frequently used functions, and you can always choose more functions. But I typically, if I'm in a room together with you guys, I will ask you what do I want, what function do I want here? Do I want to count or do I want to sum the RSVP column? 
And it's typically half and half. Half the room will say count and half the room will say sum. So I'm going to go ahead and choose sum for now and we'll come back to the count function. I'll tell you exactly what that does when we choose count. So I'm going to choose the sum function. And what that does is the sum function gives me a head count. So now the head count is 138 people and we can tell because our budget is $138,000. This is going to be a fabulous event. I can't wait. <laughs> All right, the next thing I want to do before I before I change this to count to show you what counting RSVP column does, I'm going to go to the full name column and I'm going to count how many names are in our list. So I'm going to say uh, change it from the total. So I click in total, do the drop down and click count. I'm going to select count because you can't sum text. You can only count text. And it's going to give us our count. So we have 238 people in our list that we invited. And I'm going to go ahead and delete these guys here because they're just bogus. So I'm going to highlight them, right click, delete, and then choose table rows. So we have 232 real people that we invited, 138 people um, currently have RSVP'd or are attending the event. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to switch this to count. So I'm going to change it from sum to count. And check out the difference between we had 138 and this is 92. So there's a significant difference between summing the column and counting the column. Counting gives you a total number of responses. So out of 232 people that we invited, only 92 actually have responded. So for instance, let's say Ernesto is bringing 10 people. So I'm going to change Ernesto's uh, value, RSVP value from being blank to 10. Now if you think about this, so Ernesto is 10. Um, will this number down here, will number will 92 be 93 or will it be 102? Just think about that in your head. You don't have to type it in. So just think about this. Is this going to turn into 93 or 102? So I'm going to hit enter so you can see the value that what happens when I hit enter. So by bringing 10 people, Ernesto responded and that increased it from 138 to 148, but it only increased the count from 92 to 93. So you can see the difference between count and sum. Count is the number of people who have re responded to the invitation, period. And if I put zero in this next one, in Eric, I'm going to put zero in his cell. Um, think about this. Is it going to be 93 or 94? And the response will be... 94 and you know you see with the budget it's still 148 we only have a head count so i can always switch it back and straight from sum and switch it back from sum to count so that is tip number uh they're 48 right yes 48 let's look 49 i like 49 it's so cool i like them all actually So I am going to, um, and by the way, I don't like this column responded. Um, this is a re this responded column is redundant. Uh, let me go down to the bottom and show you this. So if you'll notice, I'm going to go down to the bottom here. Okay, when Ernesto, when I put 10 in here for Ernesto. I forgot to update the responded column. When I put zero for Eric, I forgot to update the responded column. The reason why somebody included a responded column is because they wanted the ability to find all the people who have not responded. Well, guess what? We can do that using the RSVP column. So I can, instead, I can just find all the blanks in the RSVP column. I don't need a responded column. It's creating a extra work for me and it's um, creating risk for errors. So I honestly would delete the responded column. So I'm gonna right click and choose delete and say table and 
delete this table column. We do not need the respondent column. Don't create extra work for yourself or for your team that's going to just eventually um, increase the risk for errors. So that is perfect because in a second, uh, I'm going to show you really quick ways that you can filter the the RSVP. Like, let's say I want to find all people who have not responded. So typically, I'm just going to go to RSVP and type the word blank. And then I only want the people in California. So I'm going to go to state and type CA, click OK. And now maybe I want to copy this and send this to email this information to one of our managers so they can call these people. Um, now I want Texas so, or maybe Alabama. So I want Alabama. So then I'll switch it to Alabama. So next I want um, Arkansas. So then I'll go to Arkansas and get them. It, these are fictitious addresses. So that's why they all have the same address. So I can switch it um, from Alabama to to Arkansas, to Texas. But let me show you a really cool way. I'm going to go ahead and clear the filter. I'm going to show you a really cool way to filter your list. I'm going to scroll. Um, I'm going to increase the size of row one. And I'm going to do what's called a slicer. So this is tip 49, slicer. So I'm going to say insert slicer. By the way, you have to be inside your table. So you have to click in your table in order to get these tools, the table tools design tab. On a Mac, it's just called the table tab. Um, once, I'm in, once I see the table tools design tab or on a Mac, the table tab, I want to click on insert slicer. And the two fields that I constantly filter on are the RSVP field and the state field. So I'm going to check these two options and then click OK. And I get these beautiful, hold on, there we go. These beautiful little slicers. And uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on slicers, but when you click on a slicer, they're, they're an object just like tables. You're going to get all of these cool slicer tools um, when you look at the ribbon. So slicer tool options, you get all of these really cool tools. One thing you may want to do is increase the columns. So I'm right here under columns in the ribbon. If you see kind of towards the right, uh, my mouse pointer is not showing up. But on the right-hand side, um, in the buttons group, I'm going to switching it to columns, to four columns. And I'm going to resize this. Oh, you can see the pointer? Okay, perfect. I can't see the pointer. Okay, perfect. Um, so I'm going to make the state multiple columns and then resize that. Okay, so now here's, what, here's why we want to have slicers. Watch this. So let's say I'm working in this list. Someone says, hey, we need all the people from, um, from California who have not responded. Okay, I'll click on California, and then I'll click, click on blank. And so I'm, I'm using slicers as a way to filter my list quickly. And then someone goes, well, no, we need all the Oklahoma ones that are, that are not responded. Okay, let me switch it from California to Oklahoma. And then I find all the Oklahoma. It is awesome. So awesome. Okay, so that is tip number 49, slicers. Uh, 50, effortlessly select and move, uh, move columns. So, you know, a lot of times when we try to select, let's say, you know, sometimes you do this to select a range. Let me pull up California. Okay, so let's say I need to select this cell, these cells. So sometimes you'll do this with your mouse and select a range. Waiting for it to caught, get caught up. I'm going to show you how to quickly select a range, and hopefully you can see my mouse. What you're going to do is you're going to click on click an email. So let's say I need to click these emails here, and I'm going to select the um, list. So it has email right here, and I'm going to get the black arrow, and that will select the data in the email column. And when I click again on the black arrow, it will then select the header and the total. 
Same thing with um, address. So I can click the black arrow once to select just the data in the address column or select the black arrow again, click again, and that selects the header and the, the total row. So that is effortlessly selecting. And then if you wanna move stuff, let me go ahead and clear out these filters. And I want to move email. I don't like having email right next to full name. So I want email after zip code. In order to quickly move email, what you're gonna do is you're going to find the four headed arrow on PC, four headed arrow. On a Mac, you're gonna have like a cartoon hand. So I'm going to select, the, get the four headed arrow on this border and click hold and drag this column over in between zip code and RSVP. You should see a vertical line and you wanna let go as soon as that vertical line is right where you need it to be. And then you can resize your columns. So much better than having to insert a column and delete a column, copy and paste. You could just move columns around. So that is uh, tip number 50. And then tip 51 is remove duplicate records. So I think I have duplicates in here. And the only reason why I know is maybe one of my colleagues told me, or I just suspect they're duplicates. So I am going to go up to the Table Tools Design tab. Table Tools Design tab, perfect. And then on the tab over towards the left is Remove Duplicates. Remove Duplicates. So I'm going to click on Remove Duplicates. And you'll notice that it's looking for all of the columns. So it's going to examine all of the columns in my list. I'll go ahead and click OK. And it did find two duplicates. It says two duplicates found and removed. And now there's 230 unique ones that left that they left in the list. So this is a great way to, to remove those duplicates. Perfect. So that's tip number 51. And then 52 is um, summarizing your data using a pivot table. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna introduce you guys to pivot, to, uh, pivot tables. Um, we're, we're going to click anywhere in your list. And first of all, let me explain what a pivot table is. A pivot table is a way for you to create multiple reports off of one data source um, or just look at the data differently that you in a different way. So what I'd like to see is I wanna see a summary of how many people we invited, how many people responded, how many people, uh, what's the head count, and I also wanna see the budget, the current budget. So what I'm gonna do is click in any cell within this table, and you'll notice in your ribbon, the Table Tools Design tab ribbon, you'll have the option here that says Summarize with Pivot Table. So I'll go ahead and choose Summarize with Pivot Table. I'm gonna go ahead and accept the defaults here, and then click OK and it's gonna put it on a new sheet. Next, so what you'll see on the right, oh, let me wait, okay, perfect. What you see on the right uh, is the pivot table fields on the right. So these are all of the fields that came from my table. And the first thing I wanna do is I want to find out, well, let's break it down by state. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring state into this report. So let's see the unique states that are coming to this that we've invited. So I'll go ahead and check state. And it puts state in the left-hand side as my rows. And then what I wanna do is think about the very first column that we calculated. I think we calculated budget first. So, but I'm gonna wait on that one. The next one we did was RSVP. That RSVP value we added as a sum. So I'm gonna go ahead and check the RSVP column. And because that's numeric, a numeric field, it automatically placed it in the values area. So it's automatically summing and adding all the numbers together. So there's our head count. Um, now, let me do something. Don't look at my what I'm about to do because I have some default settings that you don't have. So I'm going to put on all the defaults 
um, right now. So I'm going to put it back to the default. So don't worry about what I just did. <laughs> I've customized my, my environment. All right. So we've got state and we've got the sum of RSVP. So remember, we got 145. The reason why it's not, no longer 148, I think because we had um, a couple duplicate records. So that was probably, um, I don't remember, somehow we got down to 145, 145, I don't know why. But it's probably because of the duplicates. So what I'm gonna do next is I wanna count, remember how we counted the full name field? So I'm going to pull full name into the values area, and that will automatically count the full names that we had. So we had 230 people we invited. The current head count is 145. And now what I'm gonna do is I want to also now count RSVP. So we're gonna bring RSVP. Remember how I went, I, uh, went back to RSVP and changed it from sum to count? So when you wanna do that in a pivot, just bring RSVP down again in your values area. It's going to automatically sum the column, but what you're going to do is you're going to right click in the pivot. So I'm gonna right click the sum of RSVP. I'm gonna right click any one of the values in that new column and say summarize values by and then count. Remember, y'all are gonna get the replay, you'll get the example sample, fi this file, so you'll be able to follow along on your own time and pause and play it. So don't worry too much about like, oh my gosh, I'm not getting it. Don't worry, you'll, you'll get the replay and you'll get the sample file and you'll get the step-by-step -step instructions, okay, for these tips. All right, so there's count, so I changed it to count. And now I see 145 people head, was, our head, was our head count, our current head count. We invited 230, and then we have a count of how many people who have RSVP'd. And then we'll put budget at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and check a budget. So on the right, you see budget on the list, at the bottom of the list. And I'm going to just check the word budget, and it adds it, it added it to the values area. Okay, perfect. So now what I'm gonna do, because these labels at the top don't make any sense to me. I mean, they do a little bit, but they are not very friendly. So I'm gonna change the name of this first one. This was our head count. We first did a sum of the RSCP. So I'm gonna type the word head count here and hit tab. And then full name, counting a full name, that was our number of people we invited. The count of RSVP was the number of people who responded. Responses. Well, I'm going to put responded. Oops, respond. Did. Responded. And we're going to get an error message because we already. No, we're not. No, 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 we're not. Because I deleted the responded column. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and hit responded. And then we have budget. Budget. And um, this is where I'm going to get the error message on budget. You wait till it gets caught up. Pivot table field name already exists. Remember, we already have a budget column, a budget field. So if you want to still use that as your pivot table report field, you just have to put a space after the T. We're going to trick Excel to thinking that this is a new field name. I'll go ahead and hit enter. Now, you may want to rearrange this. So in order to rearrange this, on the bottom right-hand corner, where it says values, what you're gonna do is just drag it. So maybe I want invited to be first. So I'm going to, down in the bottom right-hand corner, I'm gonna click invited and move it above head count in the list. So we have invited, I might want responded next. So I'm gonna move responded above head count. So look at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. I'm just, in the values area here, I'm just rearranging these fields. And that's why it's called a pivot because I can pivot and move things around. So number of people are invited, who has responded, what's the current head count, and the budget. Perfect. 
So that is an introduction to pivot tables. So you can do that on your own. The example file that I'm sending you guys after class that you can request is for both PC and Mac. So you'll be able to follow the instructions. And then again, for those of you on Mac, if you look at the PC and Mac ribbons, you'll see um, the different ribbons here. And then you'll also see what you need to look for when you're moving columns. You see this little, you're looking for this cartoon hand um, instead of the four headed arrow. And then this is what, um, when you do remove duplicates, this is what your remove duplicates looks like. So I just put these little um, extra things for those Mac users. Okay, so that is tip number 52. I am, um, I haven't gone to any advanced stuff, but let me, get, let me answer some questions. So Nadia, because it's uh, 1240, so let me answer some questions and I'll add some advanced stuff towards the end. Okay, perfect. Let me just pull some up. I know one of the questions um, off the bat, Vicki, was are all the tips applicable regardless of what version of Office you have? Yeah, so you have to, well, you have to have Excel 2007 or above. Excel 2007 or above? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And is the table feature available in uh, G Suite? No, this is very, this is unique just to Microsoft Office. Okay. So I guess that answers how does this convert to Google Sheets? Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. In regards to tip 49, um, what if you want to see those who have RSVP'd from a couple of different states? Would you have to um, do it individually? Oh, good. Um, so if you wanted, so I want blank, and let's say um, one manager is in charge of Oklahoma and Alabama. So I would pick Oklahoma. And I can do this check mark right here and then choose Alabama, or I can do control. I can hold down control and select as many as I want. So you can, you can select them both using control or use that little check box there. Okay, perfect. And then in regards to tip number 50, is moving a column different on a Mac computer? Um, no, because I mean, I just did it this morning. I moved my on my Mac. I moved email over and instead of getting so let me show you the arrow that you get. Hold on, get the arrow email. Okay, can you see Nadia? Can you see the four headed arrow on the screen? Yes. Okay, so for Mac, it's going to be a cartoon hand. So you just have to either position your mouse on on the top border or the bottom border of a cell mm -hmm. of, a, of a header and then it turns into this little like Mickey Mouse looking hand um, and I'm moving over to the next screen and so that's what you want is the hand when I click on it it highlights the entire row so make sure you're on a column header Kimberly when I click on that it highlights the entire row And it may be, I don't know if you're in a table or not. So why don't you use my Excel spreadsheet and then see if that works? Because it, number one, you have to be in a table for this to work. So I can't really, I don't really know what's happening on your end, why it's not working. Also, maybe what version of Excel are you using on your Mac? I love that we have Mac people in here. Awesome. Okay, just trying to see if there are a few more questions coming in. And if you um, could, please, if you have a specific question, refer to the tip number, just so. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah it's so hard. And I know, I think I saw some things coming through, like, hey, can you show me that again? Um, you'll have access to the replay so you can watch me do something again, because I really mm -hmm. want to show you some extra table, uh, table tips. And that way, um, those people that are more advanced can get the advanced tips uh, with tables. Do you think any, any other questions? Um, I'm seeing another question, although I'm not sure what tip this applies. Can rows or cells be locked to prevent accidentally deleting data? Um, there are definitely, is that, uh, that needs a little bit more explanation. So if it's, like if I have an Excel spreadsheet that I need that's now ready and locked down and I want my team to use, I can protect the workbook, but if it's for me only, like I'm working in this Excel spreadsheet and the guest list, um, 
I don't know if I would want to lock things down. So I assume you want to lock it down for um, your team, but that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother thing. That's also an object objective of the Excel expert exam too. Yeah. Um, and in regards to tip 51, when you remove duplicate records, is there a way to view the duplicates removed? Um, there is not a way to remove the duplicates, but you can, there is a way that you can, on Mac there is, and I've brought this up with Microsoft, on Mac when you say remove duplicates, it actually highlights the duplicates so that you can individually delete them. But if there happens to be a duplicate, so for instance, um, let me just add, let me just say these guys um, are duplicates. So let me show you an advanced tip real quick, and then I will show you how to identify duplicates. Um, oh, my Excel file is not responding. DLC at the very top, it says it's not responding. Let me give it some time. Um, I see a question coming in, a, a couple questions about how do you get all the extra other tips? Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, because we have um, the book is available on Amazon. We're currently sold out of the book on Amazon. I'm updating all the screenshots um, and finishing up the MacBook. You can pre-order the uh, book with all the other tips. And when I show you the uh, file, the website to go to, you can indicate that you're interested in pre-ordering. It'll take you to the order form. Um, and if this is not going... This is, uh, I'm going to, Fred, this is crashing on me. So let me restart this. One more G Suite question for you, Vicki. Um, yeah. We know we can't uh -huh. do a table on G Suite, but if you upload an Excel spreadsheet with table, can it be manipulated as a Google Sheet? Um, I don't know what this looks like on... Um, on a Google, uh, I have not uploaded this to G, to Google Sheets yet, so I don't okay. know. But I'll test it as soon as I'm done. I'm just gonna I'm gonna test it, and you guys can do that too. Is put it into a table format, or um, when you get, I guess the final the the Excel spreadsheet I'm sending you does not have the Excel tables in it, um, so you won't be able to test it. But have a friend test it for you, or email me and I'll test it. Um, okay, let me get this into a table format. Georgian, you're asking about the design table um, for Office 2010. This is available for Excel 2010 and above. If you do not see, like right now, I don't see my design tab. And the reason why I don't see my design tab is because I don't have it in a table format. If you have it in a table format, you will always see your design tab if you're clicking in the table. So I'm going to go ahead and say format as a table table has headers and um, see the table tools design tab is there that means it's a table format you can see at the top if I click outside the table um, it will not show the table tools design tab so when I click out it doesn't show the table tools design tab all right let's talk about duplicates um, by the way it looks like some people might have to leave so just in case you have to leave let me show you the website to go to and I'm going to still talk about the duplicates question. So quickly just write this um, down on page four of your of your worksheet or just on a piece of paper. To get the Excel file and to get the Word document or the PDF that has the step-by-step -step instructions for tips 45 through 52, go to redcapeco.com slash ELSX dash tables. Okay, I'm, I need to leave out of the slide and go back to so redcapeco.com slash ELSX dash table. And you can fill that out and you'll get, you'll immediately get the Excel spreadsheet. Uh, let me go back to Excel. All right, just to review, I closed my Excel file and got back into the sample file. So I still have duplicates in this spreadsheet. The question was, can I identify the duplicates first before I delete the duplicates? And I, Nadia, I think you're still off of mute. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you a way you can find 
spotlight a duplicate or highlight a duplicate, and that's using conditional formatting. It's not part of tables, it's just a conditional formatting option. So I'm going to use email as my, um, or maybe full name. So let's use full name. So I'm going to highlight the full name column, and then I'm going to go to conditional formatting. Trying to wait till it gets caught up. Highlight cell rules, and then duplicate values. This is not in the step-by-step -step instructions. I'm just showing you this extra. Highlight cell rules, and then duplicate values. And um, right here, I'm just going to say highlight duplicate values, and then click OK. Just accept the default, and it should identify the duplicates, potential duplicates for you. Come on, guys. Catch up. Okay. And then what I can do is on the filter button, I could say sort by color. You'll see that all the duplicates are pink. I'm going to choose the filter button, say sort by color, and then bring all the pink ones up to the top. And that's a way that you can see where the duplicates are. Okay. And then you can manually delete them if you want. All right. What other questions? Okay, we have a question. Before using number 51, removing duplicates, um, we can sort on the name column two if we want to see them and manually remove slash delete that row. Yeah, the thing about that is, is anytime you add the word manually delete or you know sort by name, that means you are counting on your eyesight to find duplicates. So um, they may have asked that question before I showed the conditional formatting. So I think the conditional formatting is going to be an error-proof way. Because here's the deal about Excel and why tables are, are essential. Every single person needs to be using Excel tables. And as you probably can see, let me get the screen up, is that number one, it's going to save you time. Um, it's going to and, and eliminate unessential work, even the conditional formatting, reducing duplicate, I mean, deleting duplicates, creating the calculations. It's also going to improve the integrity of your report. The minute somebody sees a mistake in your report, like if they see a duplicate or they see an error, nothing else can be trusted. So I wouldn't rely on your eyesight, like my eyesight, to, to find all the duplicates use all the tools in Excel to find the duplicates. And then the third benefit is that it looks good. It looks so much better because the banded rows, you can make it colorful if you want. Um, but the it, tables are the essential skill. Everyone should have their data in tables. And the other thing I, I will mention is that it doesn't have to be a long list. I'm going to show you an example of a budget. This is the event budget. And you can see I've got little bitty tiny uh, groups of information. So these are site expenses. I've got refreshment expenses, decorations. So what I'm going to do, there's a shortcut to tables. It's Control T. T is in table. So when I do Control T or Command T on a Mac, Control T, it says, um, do I want to create a table? And it says my table has headers. So I'm going to go ahead and check that and then click OK. And then Control T again. And I'll keep doing control T. I'll just do on four on four of them. I'm doing control T, my table has headers, okay. Control T, my table has headers, okay. And then there are two that don't have the additional columns, but that's okay because I'm going to type, um, add the extra column headers, estimated and actual. And you can see how it's eliminating unessential work. It's going to save me time. My report's going to look much better. And the integrity is going to be improved because I'm using tables. Perfect. All right, what other questions? Um, oh, we only have one minute. Yes. Um, in <laughs> regards to pivot tables, I just had it. OK, here we go. If you wanted to add yeah. a graph to your pivot tables to show data in a different way, could you do it? Yeah. And this will be yes, the last I don't have time to. <laughs> yeah, I don't have time to show today because that's opening up a whole nother 30 minutes. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. In the, I don't have, I had to close my file, so I don't have it here. But yeah, you can base, you can create charts off of your pivot tables. 
that's the beauty of it. Okay, perfect. Um, can I go, can I just do one, can I just do a couple of advanced stuff for the people that have waited patiently? Yes, of um, course. Okay, I'll do really quick ones because I want to show a few things in the ribbon. Um, so one thing I want to show you is, let me turn on my total row, is when you have your total row, uh, when you try to add new records with your total row turned on, you'll notice that it does not expand the table. So in order to expand the table in this scenario, if you look at the far right-hand corner, of the table, there's a little bitty triangle. I'm going to drag that triangle um, beyond, so the bottom right-hand corner of the table has a little triangle next to 232. I drag that so that it include, it drag it down to include the additional rows that I added. Um, the other thing I want to share with you under Table Tools Design tab is you can always resize the table. So instead of me dragging the table, I could have clicked on Resize Table top left hand corner of my ribbon and then I could have said I could just said you know 244 instead of 240 so I can and expand the table that way um, there is so I want to look show you this you they're gonna when you go back to your desk and you look at your existing report and you want to convert it to a table format so let's say you have this report you're like oh my report is so gross and ugly I want it to be a table format well, um, this has a lot of really bad formatting. And so you might be tempted just to click somewhere in this list, go to format as a table, and I'm just gonna choose the yellow format just for now, just for so that you can, you can see. So I'm gonna pick a yellow format, my table has headers, and click okay. You cannot add, you cannot um, accurately or effectively add convert it to a table format if you have formatting already on top of it. So watch what happens when I do a sort. Like it's really, really bad formatting. So you're trying to add good formatting on top of bad formatting. So what you're going to do instead, let me show you how to convert this back to a range. So I'm going to click on my ribbon tab. You'll notice it says convert to a range. It's right underneath remove duplicates. So I say convert to a range. And it says, do you want to convert the table to a range? I say yes. It still looks like the table format we had, but I can tell it's not a table format because we no longer have table tools design tab at the top. So now what I need to do is I need to clear the format. So I'm doing, I'm gonna select my table or do control A, select my range. Over here on the far right on your ribbon is clear formats, clear formats. So I say clear formats. It's going to clear my formats here. Unfortunately, it clears the date format. This is where Google wins. Whenever you say clear formats in a Google sheet, it does not clear the dates. Um, but that's okay, you can change it back to date. My goal is to get this into a table format. Now that I cleared the formats, I can go to format as a table and then click the yellow one. If I like yellow, my table has headers and now it's a beautiful table. All is right in the world. Okay. So I wanted to end on that. Perfect. And perfect. A couple extra, yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> yes. Well, um, th this hour just flew by, Vicky. I, I and I know I everyone know, else is going to have more time. Um, but I would like to express my gratitude to Vicky for her time today and all the work she's doing to progress the administrative profession. Um, I've had so many questions on on when we'll be hearing back from you. And Vicky will be leading technology workshops for executive assistants at the upcoming ELS forums in San Francisco. Fort Lauderdale, Nashville, Minneapolis, Columbus, Charlotte, and much more. Um, before signing off, I have uh, some final reminders. A recording of this webinar and a certificate of attendance will be emailed to you tomorrow. Our next ELSX webinar will take place on Thursday, May 9th, where Bonnie Lowe Craman will interview the Vice President of Talent Development and Diversity at JCPenney, along with her brilliant executive assistant about their strategic business partnership. You can register for that or any of our upcoming webinars at elsforum.com. I hope you enjoyed today's ELXX and a final thank you to everyone for joining us and participating. We hope you have a wonderful week and I wish you continued success. Thank you again, Vicki.
Yeah, you bet. Thanks, Nadia. Thanks, everyone. And we'll see you soon. Bye.